Oh, praise the Lord. Here we are. We're here to come to praise the Lord this morning. To worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let's just stand this morning. Is there any prayer requests as we would start the service? Unspoken. All right, let's all lift up our voice together. Heavenly Father, as we come before thy throne, we've come through the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. Lord, you know the situation on every heart. Lord, those that would have, Lord, unspoken requests, I know, Father, you know them. I pray you would meet the need, Lord, whether in this building or whether by the way of the Internet. For there's no distance in thee, Lord. And, Lord, we're ever so thankful that you call us one day to your great salvation. Now, Lord, we commit the service in your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Be seated this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Bob Killen to come lead us in his song service. Take the wings of the morning, I 
or fall into the deepest sea even there If I take the wings of the morning or fall into the deepest sea, even there, even there, you are with me. thankful this morning that uh, the truth that God has bestowed upon our bosoms. Yes, the world is fast falling apart, getting worse and worse. But the more we walk down life's road, the more, the more we see the steadiness and the faithfulness of God's word. There's coming a day that we will rejoice. But there are things that are necessary while we go to that point that God, in order to us to be molded, is through trials, tests, and temptations. Because without it, then we're not a proven vessel. We're just a vessel that has hurt some understanding. 
But when it comes to God, it's not just understanding with the mind, but truth has to be built into your being, to your soul, that it is a part of you. And praise the Lord. It's not done overnight. I'm glad he takes his time. And I'm glad, I mean, when I first came in the message, I had heard rumors that it was going to be over in 1977. I came in 1974. I thought, wow, it's going to be a short time. But here we are, 2014, and the Lord has not come. But we know a whole lot more than we did back then in, in 74 and 77. So this morning, I thought of looking into, uh, looking at the half hour silence, looking at some clues about that half hour silence. To begin with, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he ascended on high to be our high priest and advocate. And I'm thankful that he is there as our high priest and advocate because there's none of us that once we came through the altar and accepted the Lord as our Savior, that we didn't make no mistakes. Because if it was the case you'd come to the altar and make no mistake, we would never need it, a high priest or an advocate. But I'm thankful that the Lord, God knew what we're like. <laughs> he, know, he knew us before the foundation of the world. And so Jesus is not in heaven, sitting on some throne somewhere, having his hand crossed, waiting for the time to come that he's going to change position. He's been working on our behalf. Now sometimes when we see Jesus on that throne, now, when we say Jesus is sitting on the throne, how many know there's no chairs in heaven? It's just symbolic so our mind can understand positions and how things are happening in heaven. Seated on that throne means, on a throne, it means he has given authority. And the authority he has been given is to redeem you and I back to God. And I'm thankful that God has given him all power to accomplish that work. God did not give him power over the stars and the heavens and such like, but he gave him power, everything that was, would be required for your and my salvation. And so when Jesus said it on high, as a type, as we would look some type of the Old Testament, yes, there was priests, Jewish priests in those days that in certain localities, in different areas, they would have a synagogue and they, they would meet the needs of the people. But the high priest didn't hear the confessions or the problems that was for every one of the whole nations all at the same time on one Sabbath day. He was a representation for the nation. And Jesus Christ is sitting on that throne as a representation to guide, lead this bride that is here on earth. Now, granted, there's not going to be a whole bunch of other Old Testament priests going around, but God has set forth a five-fold ministry that he can speak the word and have it dedicated to that ministry to teach and to instruct and to, to lead on and to show truth in the hour that we live in. But it all comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, and that in turn comes from our Heavenly Father the one we will never see with a physical eye, but you will see his personality in a sense. You can look at a person, like Brother Ray says, if I never spoke a word, you see the physical feature. You identify the physical feature, but you don't know really what I'm like. But unless something is spoken and expressed, even if you were blind, you would know that person, what is that person's like. And so, therefore, we will know our Heavenly Father because we will see how it has been portrayed through the Lord Jesus Christ. The things about the Lord, He shed His blood for you and me. That's one thing that the great eternal spirit could never do. Jesus died for you and me. He's a kingsman redeemer. Well, the great eternal spirit can't never die. 
It's an impossibility. But he that can never die was working in and through his only begotten son. And so therefore there's great communion between our great our heavenly father and our high priest. And he knows exactly what to do on your and my behalf. Aren't you thankful he's there to plead our case? Sometimes Satan will get on your backs and tell you, you're not worthy, look what you've done, you ain't going to make it. Right? We have certain things within our own closet. I, well, I'm not here to open skeletons. That's between you and the Lord. I got enough of my own. But nevertheless, God knows what goes on. But then there's another part of Jesus Christ. He's there to lead this bride, to lead the church to the plan of God that the bride would come to a completion one day. And as we would pick up in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within on the backside, sealed with seven seals. That's the book of redemption. He had that book of redemption. It was sealed. And you know what? All the names were there before the foundation of the world in that seal. It didn't open up and start scribbling some names at the last minute. But nobody knew who they were except the Heavenly Father as He knew everyone that would be in that scroll. But as time would progress from the time Jesus went up on high and sat on that throne, as we're leading down towards the hour that we live in, those names that are written there those people has been appeared on the earth down through time that will fulfill the ranks of all those that's written in that scroll. And then now the apostle, as he's looking at this, the apostle John says, And no man in heaven, in earth, under the earth, or was able to open the book, and neither to look thereupon. The reason that no man could do it, I'm sure John saw in the Spirit, it would take someone worthy that the great eternal Spirit wants somebody worthy to open the scroll of redemption. But no man was worthy. So as John's looking, he's, he'd be like one of us brought out into the future. He's looking around. Who's worthy? And I wept much because no man found worthy to open the book. Why did he weep? Had he been looking at the throne, he could have seen Jesus. And he could have said, he's worthy. But because of the anointing and the presence and the, the glow that's coming from the throne, he doesn't see him as he's seen him on earth. And so therefore he's weeping. Because uh, I read in between the lines, he's looking for that one, and he's not seeing them. And I wept much, because no man was worthy to open and to read the book, and to, and to read the book, neither to look thereupon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Now he still doesn't see him, but it looks what he sees. He sees, and remember, he's seen this in, in Sibu, although he was brought in a vision, he's seen things. Some things sometimes are real, and sometimes things are symbolic. It's not as if you're up there in heaven and you get to see everything, because the presence of God that allows him to see in, in that heavenly realm can sometimes show the real people are there, or sometimes it just shows you see it in symbolic. 
Then he says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, the one that he couldn't see because he was weeping, because he would have, if he'd have recognized him, he wouldn't have wept. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, the four and twenty beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth unto all the earth. So he's seen, he's seen this majestic scene on the throne, although he's, because Jesus is glorified, he doesn't really, with the glory of God around him, he doesn't see the man that walks on the shores of Galilee. But then it changes in symbolic, and then he sees a lamb coming forth. That shows a transition, that now that he is the lamb of God, he's worthy to take that book. It shows the, it shows the attribute that Christ, he is worthy to open the to take the book. All right. And he came and took the book out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now there's not a lamb coming out and saying ba 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 and, and grab the the scroll. It's shown it's all it's portraying because sometimes we have to look what it really means. It means is God is showing a transition for Christ had been seated on the throne. And now he's given to a lamb to take that seal, that scroll. And I beheld, sorry. And when he had taken the book, the four and twenty beasts, the four, sorry, the book, then the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down to the, before the lamb, having every one of them harps and gold vials full of orders, odors, which are the prayers of the saint. Now there is some key words here that's going to help us when we look at the space of the half hour. When he had taken the book, it shows that in heaven, now there's a transition taking place. This would be around 1963. He's going to get ready to open those seals. And we know it's the Lord Jesus Christ. So the four beasts are bound down. And also the 24 elders. Now these 24 elders, they're holding a vials of prayer. What is that signifying to you and I? Maybe I'll change the picture here. Well, maybe I'll, I tried to get something, but I couldn't find something, so I did the best I could trying to... Sometimes when you see a picture, it sort of holds your mind to it. So now he's got the scroll in his hand, and the 24 elders are around the throne... They put their crowns down. They're ready to. They're 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 bowing before the Lamb, but they have these bowls full of odor, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, when you look at that, we have to look at two things. We look at the prayers of saints, and we think automatically, "Oh, that's the Grace Age only." No, it's not. There's twenty-four. Twelve of the old, twelve of the new. So they're holding it, the bowl of the prayers. It's a representation that each one of those 24, in the respect of what God has ordained for them, like say the, the twelve of the new, each one holds the prayers of the saints in the grace age among the twelve of the new. These prayers have been been put, if I can symbolize it myself in this way, as someone would pray from the days of Pentecost, as those prayers get put into the bowl. Now, don't look at it that way because I'm expressing it. The prayers are now starting to fill into that bowl because Jesus heard those prayers or those prayers reached heaven when, you were, when that person was praying, whether back then or even now. But the, the, they're accumulating all the prayers from every saint's accountable 
of whether the new or old saints, because you have the 12 of the, there are 24 elders, so the 12 of the old, they have their bowl is full. It's symbolic time-wise. You are now looking at the time Jesus is going to be peeling those seals, right? But here's what I caught, a few little words. He says, And every one of them harps and golden vials full of the odors which are the prayers of the saints. It's the little word of the saints. In another place, we're going to see all the saints. So time-wise, when you have come, maybe I'll show another picture now. People like pictures. Well, it helps me because I don't have to preach so long. You are standing somewhere near 63, where this verse here is being played, played out. The 24 elders are, have been up there for a long while. And so they're, they have the prayers of all the saints up to the point the saints are praying here. All right? In 63. Now let's read on. And they sang a new song saying... Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to our God by, the bl- by thy blood and out of every kindred and tongues, people and, na- and nations, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's the promise of our salvation, not only just to be saved, we're going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ in that millennium. Now, As we move into verse 11 and 12, we're going to see the transitional place. It's not one event that's 63 and then the next thing in order. It's a season of our transition that I'm trying to show here this morning. So as we now read to 11, And I beheld and I heard the voices of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them, 10,000 times 10,000. And thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory and blessing. Verse 12, he says, He is worthy to receive power. What is this power that it's talking about and the blessing and everything has taken place? Didn't Jesus, when he ascended on high and sat on the Father's throne... Actually, before then, God told him, all power, Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth when he walked on earth is given unto me. He had power then. Is this verse reinstating the power that God gave him there? No. It's the power going to be for his kingship rule. That is speaking in the 12th verse. All right? Because that's why all the angels, they weren't doing what they've been, what you see in verse 11, all through the grace age. Because when it comes to verse 12, it says, You're worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive, not had received, to receive. So Jesus is going to be invested now with power. And it doesn't tell you exactly when that's all unfolding, but we know that it does does unfold when he opens that millennium because now he's going to be having that authority and that honor that is given to him in verse 12. How many see that this morning? So time-wise, he is to receive this. Now, I want to go to Revelation chapter 8.
They've got to make these icons a little bit bigger. Where is it? There it is. Just have to click on the right one. So prior to what you see here, in 63, that's where Jesus started to open six of those seals, right? He had the scroll. The four and 24 elders has been there. They said they have the odors of all of the saints. It doesn't say all the saints. But now as we reach Revelation chapter 8, which puts us in this period of time here now, We've gone to 1963. So when, when is that going to happen that he opens the seventh one? When that seventh seal is opened, it's not been opened yet. Do we know the day that that's going to be open? Not the day we don't. But we know it is somewheres after the Ezekiel War, that the seventh seal is going to be broken. So Revelation chapter 8 follows from Revelation chapter 5, we just read, how Jesus is going to receive power, right? So now as we arrive here in, in chapter 8, it talks about, and when the seventh seal was open in heaven, there was a space of a half hour. Now, you that might be listening by the way of the Internet, I'm not to here to tell you how long that half hour is, by no shape or means. I'll repeat it again. I'm not here to say how long that half hour is. But there is things in the Scriptures that shows us the starting point and the finishing point of that half hour space of time. Now we looked at some things before in the past that there was a silence for the space of a half hour. During this half hour silence there's going to be seven thunders sound Seven thunder has to be have its effect global wise wherever the saints may be. And that's not going to be in a two week period of time. It's not just hearing it, it has to be instilled and absorbed by the saints that's going to hear what those seven thunders are going to say. Once that happens, after the thunders have rolled and the bride has received the instructions and been instilled into the, every one of the bride, which will probably take. Now, if I say a time frame, some people will just, uh, they'll, I know they will. Let's put it this way. You ain't going to do it in a week or two. But it may take a year or a year and a half. It's just an estimate. I do not know. I'm just saying it's not going to be an instantaneous thing. But once those thunders are finished, then you have the prophesying to the tongues and nations and so forth. So all that is entailed in that space of that half hour of silence. So what I'm trying to show this morning is during that half hour, half hour of silence, you're going to have some activity taking place on the earth. And let's just say for argument's sake, not to argue, <laughs> but let's say it takes two to three years from the thunders speaking till the thunders, uh, till the, the prophecies, till the nation is done. Well, I thought this is going to happen real quick. Hey, God's going to not gonna leave nobody out. Everybody's got to be involved. So therefore... In heaven, there was a silence in heaven. And the first thing our carnal mind thinks of is, oh, everybody be quiet, silence now. 
No. Who's, who can be silent for two and three years? In heaven they might. Definitely not on earth. And do you think Satan's going to hush up too? I don't think so. He's going to be more busy trying to do things to, towards the earth and accuse the brethren if he can. This silence means when Jesus has moved from being the high priest and now he is in transition towards to be king. That's what verse 12 is pointing to you, to receive it. So you're in that transitional point. When Jesus moves off that position of authority that he has, that he was sitting there for the power for our salvation, it is over. In other words, he don't have to sit, he's no longer sitting to save anybody as far as grace to be in the bride of Jesus Christ when that seventh seal is broke. So therefore the silence means from that position of that authority now becomes silent. No more speaking prophecy coming forth from the throne on high. Because now the speaking is going to be done. There's going to be a Archangel that's going to come through the earth and he's going to cry and the seven thunders are going to sound. And those thunders are not going to be sounding in heaven, they're going to be sounding here on earth. They're not sounding from the throne. They're not sounding from that throne. They're, sound, they're sounding from the earth. Where's the Lord Jesus Christ in, in that period of time? He's going to be occupied with all the deceased bride saints from the days of Pentecost till that seventh seal was broke. What's he going to be involved in? It doesn't show us much details. Oh, we, wait, we like to know every little detail where he is, where he went, how he did it, and everything, and so forth. When you look at it, those saints that are in heaven from the days that the grace age started till the seventh seal... Those saints are a multitude of numbers of people. They're up in heaven, yes. They're not going to be up there in heaven and say, Well, Lord, send my resurrected body up here. They have to come down to, to hear it. And who's going to sound that last trump? At that time, the rate that for the dead to rise... Jesus is involved in that. So he is busy gathering and... You, well, I thought God can do something in a split second. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is, has a form like you and I will have when we're in heaven. He's not everywhere present, nowhere absent. So he's going to be... Oh, well, he's involved in dealing with the deceased bride saints to come to get the resurrect body. During that space of time, that angelic being is speaking to the bride of Jesus Christ for us to be made ready. It will take the exact time for that angel as he deals with us here on earth through the live element of the bride and when Jesus is dealing with the deceased element of the bride that when the time comes for the rapture the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we are alive, going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye, and we'll meet the Lord in the air. How many follow? So, this starting of the half-hour silence, we know that's when that seal is broke. But now, where does it end? Let's read on. And I saw seven angels that stood before the throne, before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now he's just introducing, as that, ain't, as that seventh seal is broken, the half hour of silence is there, it's just a preview of those seven ain't trumpet angels that's going to be involved in the week of Daniel. They're just standing there. They're not sounding yet. It's just introducing them. There's going to be a transition there as well. So now, as we go on in verse 3, 
And another angel came and stood at the altar. Don't picture a physical altar in heaven, but this is symbolic. And having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. If those 24 elders that we read in chapter 5 with the bowls of all the orders of the saints, that was already done. So what's this angel doing with incense now? For what for? And there was given to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. Now you are here. It's just pictured here as a... Now, actually, as he's... It is this angel. He's, in, in, in Revelation chapter 5, we've seen that the elders who had the bowls of incense, that they were bound before the Lord, and they were, they, theirs was full. But it said, of the saints. It didn't say all the saints. Then from that period of time, when you're looking from 63 on, there's still saints praying. They don't pray in heaven. How many know that? Your prayers is over in heaven. Prayers is down here as we communicate with the Lord for our needs. Because your need has been fulfilled once you've been into heaven. So now as we go from here we have the 24 elders. They have the, the bowls the go, of all the prayers of the saints for the 24, for all the representation of all the saints from all down through time. They didn't offer it up yet. It's in the bowl. But when it comes to verse 3 here, now you're standing, and it's not Jesus that's going to be offering up those prayers. It's an angelic being. And when that angel is done, then there's no more prayer that's going to be offered up the sweet incense for the element that has been, has, has resurrected bodies. I'll put it that way. Yes, there are going to be saints in the, in the week of Daniel. And they're going to probably, the uh, foolish virgins and the, the Jews, they're going to be praying there. But these prayers that's offered before God, is, it's in reference to all those that would have part of the first resurrection and the second part of the resurrection. So now this angel, as he's finished, this is representing the prayers. He says, of all the prayers. So he's taken, up, can I read between the line here? He's taken the bowls. Or, but the, the bowls are represented of the 24 elders. Plus from the time till we have the last child that's going to be in the rapture has prayed the last prayer. Now that's filled in with it and he's offering up the prayers of all of them and it's ascending before God. Because at that hour, Jesus, when that's when he opens that seventh seal, his function is no longer high priest. If he'd have been still a high priest, it would have said Jesus was offering up those prayers of all the saints, because now he's in a transitional period. How many can understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say this morning? When that seventh seal is broke here, Jesus is no longer high priest. He's no longer a high priest down through this half-hour silence. But what ends that half-hour silence? When the last prayer is prayed, when the dead in Christ rise, and we are alive are changing in the twinkle of an eye, then he moves back up to heaven. Then from heaven at the wedding supper, then there's no more silence. He's not going to say, well, I can't say anything because we're at the wedding supper. Because what are, what's the wedding supper for? Let's read between the line there too. At that wedding supper, we're going to receive divine instructions. 
No, he's not shown as like it portrays sitting on a throne in that position of authority because you can't have him back sitting in that throne position in the during the week of Daniel, but he is sitting at the wedding table and there now can flow revelation or instruction to the bride at the wedding supper. So now, actually, I'll put it this way. When we go up in the rapture, when the last prayer is prayed, that throne position, if you want to, if you want to look at it as a physical little chair, a big chair, disappears. It's no longer there anymore. How many can see what I'm saying this morning? So the length of that half hour silence, because it's not due to holding our mouth closed, and when that, ha- when that seventh seal is broke and there's silence in heaven and we hear that angelic cry saying it is open, it's over and the seventh seals, when he uttered his voice the seventh, sorry, when he uttered his voice the seventh thundered other their voices are we going to read this chapter 8 well, okay, it's open now we can't speak a word till we go up <laughs> When you hear those thunders, there's going to be more than just keeping silent. If one thunder caused the opening of six seals, which was really wonderful, what do you think seven thunders are going to do to a bride that's going to be here? You marry that together with a rainbow that's about that angelic being that's coming down in Revelation chapter 10, which is none other but the presence of Almighty God. There's something at the end of the road when we come to the point that those thunder sound, there's going to be anointing hit this bride that she had never seen before to that level. Can you imagine we talk about seven thunders. Oh, yeah, there's a thunder over there, there's a thunder over here. But the effect, what is the effect of a thunder? It's divine instruction. God is speaking. Not directly that you hear a voice from heaven because God used angelic being to speak to, his vo- to the uh, children of Israel. Because in Exodus 23, chapter 23, verse 21, God is saying, That angel, beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. God was speaking through that angelic being when they came out from Egypt. Now God can speak through an angelic being. And he's not choosing just any ordinary angels to do this. It's an archangel. It's in Revelation chapter 10, actually, where we're looking at. It doesn't say archangel. Well, he's not going to use a guardian angel. Because in the angelic family, there's also, just like there is in the body of Christ, there's a five-fold ministry in the body. And not everyone's a pastor, and not everyone's an apostle. But surely, in the angelic family, there are angels that are above other angels. I can think of Gabriel, and I can think of Michael. And they're going to be involved when this miracle war takes place. Michael is for the nation of Israel. Do you think Gabriel's going to stand by? For the, on the on part of the for the on part of the bride, I don't think so. Well, praise the Lord. So it's just that little word, when the twenty-four elders had the prayers of the saints. He had taken the book. He had opened six seal. And you have the 24 elders within that time frame 
bring in the prayers of the saints of the those they've been representation of. But when you come and the seventh seal is broke, those 24 elders are not holding the prayers during that space of silence for that half hour. And the prayers that they're holding in the bowls over here, when it comes to the time just prior to the rapture, that's where that angelic being offers up the prayers of all the saints. Now you can't have the 24 elders over here. Uh, sorry, oh, it's left to right, yeah. Can't have the 24 elders having all the prayers here and then they're being offered. Then, then this angel says he's offering up all the prayers. They're held to show that they were, that they represented holding the prayers of those representation down through time. But then when it comes to the half hour silence, it's to show that Jesus is no longer high priest. Now it's the angelic being takes those prayers with our prayers. And then when that's offered up, immediately after that, you are now in verse four, sorry, verse Verse 5, you are now into the week of Daniel. So in verse 4 it says, And the smoke of the incense, which came from the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God, and out of the angel's hand. It didn't say out of Jesus' hand. I know in our mind we say, well, Jesus has the right to offer up those prayers. He's been high priest. He's been dealing with the prayers down through the grace age. But when he steps off that seat and picks up that scroll and starts to open them and he opens the last one, sorry, when he opens those seals and he opens that last one, now that book of redemption is open, right? And when that book of redemption is over, open, that means he, is no, he doesn't have to act as our high priest and lawyer anymore. The program of God is complete. That's what happens at that seventh seal when he's broken. And so therefore, that's why the, an angel is dedicated to do the offering of those prayers. Well, just a few little words. Just a little bit here, a little bit there. We can start to see the picture a little bit. So now, in looking... That's why I put these in yellow here, prayers of the living saints down below. That's a short space of time in the transition that has to be accounted for. Because don't you want your prayers to be accounted for? When that seventh seal is broke, all we, we want to be earnest and so forth and such like, well, when we hear of a surety that that seventh seal is broke, do you think we're going to sit complacent? Yeah, the seventh seal is broke. Ain't that nice? No, something's going to... If there's ever a, a time... <laughs> if we know that we've been walking with the Lord, it's a time to rejoice. If we haven't, it's nail-biting time. Right? But then again, those there won't be any nail-biting in when those sun is to reveal because it's only to the bride that will be in the rapture. I'll put it that way. But here they'll end. Jesus is still on the, on the throne of mercy till we reach that seventh seal. The little bottle of anointing oil that Brother Jackson saw in the dream, everyone having that little bottle of anointing oil, he's he pictures that after the miracle war somewhere that everyone would have that little ball of anointing oil. In other words, to me, it's showing that the church has come somewhere between the miraculous war and the war of Ezekiel 38, 39. In the interim, in there somewhere, the bride will have reached her perfection. Because they were all coming to the same place with that little ball of anointing oil. And so how far away are we looking at for these things that take place? 
We're in 2014. Next year is 2015. And I know some have been calculating dates. Date can be a snare. But prophetic events are vindication of truth. That's the most important part rather than, oh, I believe it's in 2015 that the week of Daniel is going to start. My foot. There's not enough time for the miracle war takes place, the building of the temple, the Ezekiel 38, 39, the seven thunders to unfold, and the prophesying to the nations. Can that all be done in a year's time? No. But, praise the Lord. And we're not going to be immune from things that are going to bombard our way. Because as we move on into more nuggets and more light, the devil will bring things around just to muddy the waters. All this is is done that the spirit that calls you will make the true child of God see the truth and make him to dig and be established on that revelation. Because every truth, every revelation that you and I receive, we are tested on it at one point or another. Oh, but I wish we didn't have testing. I thought, you know, it'd be kind of nicer. We were saving, Lord, just take me home. And then where's that mansion in heaven? Well, we know there's no mansion in heaven of at the house you're going to have to walk into that's made of gold and things like that. There's no houses up in heaven. There's no throne seat that you're going to find, a nice gold throne seat with, with flowery carvings on it and such like. It's the spirit world. It's time we have to start thinking about what the spirit world is like. And in the spirit world, to show that God is everywhere present, nowhere absent. Here we have the sun. It shines here. On the backside at night, it don't shine, right? And you think the saints up in heaven and where Jesus is, oh, there's only light because Jesus is, is forming a light in, in the heavenly realm. God is a light. He lights up the spirit world. And if he lights up that spirit world of his presence, then you and I, when we get up there, we ain't going to fumble in the dark. Yes, we will see in Jesus that glory of the Father that's in and through him, but then there's the part of God that's everywhere present that lights up the whole spirit world. Because it's lit up, he sees everything, doesn't he? (laughs) Well, I'm just putting it... Don't go to seat on that one. So I'm thankful... You know, it's the things we know today, and when I remember when I started back in 74, it's a long, it's a long way from what, when we first started. Certain things we weren't even thinking about back then. But what lights up the spirit world? Is there a sun there blazing out there in that world? No. It's God. Because before the world, and that was was formed he didn't fumble in the dark sometimes I'd like to take some of those scientists and take them to task but all you want to get is an argument unless God opens up our understanding and we see then there's you can be as intelligent as you want you can have university and doctor degrees as you want you'll never see it but I'm thankful that he was he, the reason he chose you and I because he saw something that would take his word and cause a hunger to know his plan what he has for you and I in the hour we live in sometime I wish I could make a movie to try to represent this as if the world would want to see it but we know we ain't going to save the world. It's not us not given in our hand to save the world to begin with. 
We can't pray someone to salvation. We can only ask God that moves on their behalf, and He knows whether they would accept it. First of all, it boils down on choice. They'd have to accept as God would present something to them. So praise the Lord this morning. I just a uh, little nugget shown why it says to the 24 elders, prayers of the saints. But when you get to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3, it says all the saints. And there's a reason behind it. It shows to me, here's the, the boundary that starts this, that half hour silence is the part that when that seventh seal is broke, the angel comes down. This half hour of silence is over when the last prayer is prayed, the, the prayers of all the saints have been offered up, the dead in Christ rise first, and we are alive and remaining. Now, just saying that the dead in Christ rise first and we are alive, uh, we are alive and remaining shall be changed in the twinkle of an eye. Had it not put in there the prayers of all the saints, you and I would not know actually where the other boundary would lie. But because it's the praying part of the saints, then it shows us a space of time, doesn't it? It's related to our going up. That angel ain't going to offer all the prayers at the beginning when the seventh seal is broke. It's only at the end when all when we whoever is the last one to make the last prayer. Now, there's some people like to be last because they like to show what they are. It ain't going to be like that when I pray the last prayer. <laughs> They'll be in our closet somewhere, or it could be wherever God has ordained. He knows where it is. He knows who it's going to be. And there's no merit badge because you were the one that prayed the last prayer. All right? God don't work like that. So as much as trying to explain something this morning I just thought I'd bring in that little part remember Jesus is no longer high priest once that seven seal is broke and then the other part because that shows that when the angels offering up the prayers that's why it can't be Jesus now, I've had some say or I've heard well that's Jesus offering up the prayers of the saints this is after 2005, but it's not Jesus. They say, well, is Jesus in angelic form? No. The fact that he opens that seventh seal, that means salvation is finished. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's not his job anymore, I put it that way. So praise the Lord. Are you all happy? Amen. Well, one of these days I'll get on to a salvational message. But we all have our area where the Lord leads us and deals with us. And uh, it's good to stay in the confines what God has called us for. So let's just stand here with your musicians to come at this time. stand up for one song what a day that'll be key of Ephesus or one of those keys what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by
Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for thy presence. Lord, you're more than able to supply every need. We thank you, Lord. One day, Lord, never expire. Hallelujah. Brother Chuck, if you would dismiss us in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the 